My name is Linda, and I'm 65 years old. I lost my husband to illness about 10 years ago. Recently, I retired from a long career in elderly care. Now, I live in the home my late husband left for us, sharing it with my eldest son and his wife. My younger son and his wife live nearby and often check in on me. Both of my children are married, and with my retirement, I was just starting to think about what my next chapter would be. But there is something that's bothering me. It's my eldest son, Charles, and his wife, Elizabeth. At first, they lived on their own, but about a year ago, they suddenly showed up at my doorstep with their bags packed. Charles works for a big corporation, and Elizabeth is a doctor at a reputable hospital. It didn't make sense that they'd be strapped for cash. How inconsiderate, showing up like this without even asking? I was furious and wanted to send them packing. But Charles looked at me with teary eyes, and Elizabeth hinted that they could instead impose on my younger son and his wife Susan. What a piece of work she is. To avoid burdening my younger son and his family, I ended up letting them move in. Soon after they moved in, I found out that Charles had left his job at a large corporation to work for a smaller company about six months prior. Charles has always been timid and apparently struggled with the atmosphere and relationships at his new workplace. My salary dropped, but I like the culture at my current job. I don't regret it, but... According to Charles, Elizabeth's attitude worsened after his job change to the point of hurling insults at him. For example, she'd say things like, You moved to a lesser company. You should be handling all the housework. And squandered money without thinking, saying, Let me shop how I want. Useless people shouldn't complain. At first, Charles tried to meet all her demands. But juggling work and household chores was too much for him. Exhausted, Charles told her he couldn't handle it anymore, to which she suggested, Then let's move in with your mother. She was a caregiver. She can easily take care of us. I'm not only angry at Elizabeth, but also disappointed in Charles for agreeing. Elizabeth wasn't like this when she first married Charles. She was a newly minted doctor, full of energy and hope. I'll give my best, both as a wife and as a doctor. I was secretly delighted to see such a good woman marry my son. Do people really change this much? I couldn't help but wonder if Charles was really the reason for his wife's change in behavior. Linda, you used to be a caregiver, and yet your food is heavily seasoned, isn't it? Elizabeth says this while digging into her meal. For some reason, Elizabeth views caregiving as a low-level job, and she tends to mock me by mentioning it. She also seems to have a bias against other jobs like cleaning and factory work, as if those jobs aren't just as honorable. I tried to clear away the food with a smile, saying, You don't have to eat it. Elizabeth cut me off. I have a demanding job. I need to get nutrients, even if the food doesn't taste good. She eats it all every time, but still complains. Charles only looks on awkwardly during my exchanges with Elizabeth. Elizabeth has become increasingly demanding, citing her busy work schedule. There's no end to her demands, like asking for a different menu while I'm cooking, or insisting that the laundry be hand-washed. Not that I pay her much mind. Speaking of, Elizabeth, are you attending the upcoming family gathering? It's to celebrate my nephew getting into medical school. They'd love to have you, being a doctor and all. I steer the conversation. My nephew is my younger brother's son, and my brother wants a grand celebration. I get that they'd want to hear from a practicing physician. I can make an appearance. It's at a fancy restaurant, right? Sounds fun. 
Elizabeth is visibly excited, probably looking up the restaurants on her mobile phone. Elizabeth's sarcastic remarks continue. Don't come dressed casually like you usually do, Linda. You must be living off your pension after working in a low-end, caregiving job. I wouldn't want to be embarrassed. That's a bit too much. Charles finally interjects, but a glare from Elizabeth silences him. I only invited Elizabeth because my brother wanted her there, but I hope it goes smoothly. I let out a sigh, feeling fed up with Charles and Elizabeth. On the day of the family gathering, my other son and his wife offered to drive me. Linda, thank you for the other day. The dinner party was so much fun. We'd like to treat you next time. Susan, my younger son's wife, greets me with a smile. I recently invited my older and younger sons and their spouses for a dinner party. Susan's comments is probably a thank you for that. Interestingly, Elizabeth had canceled at the last minute. She had said the event sounded boring over the phone, even though I'd mentioned there was something important to discuss. I'm glad you enjoyed it, I say with a smile. Elizabeth jumps into our conversation. If you're treating, make it steak or lobster, okay? Elizabeth, hold on, I was talking to Linda. Susan chuckles. Elizabeth, who had been fiddling with her phone, tightens her cheeks, clearly miffed. Christopher, our younger son, who's been suppressing a laugh, opens the car door, and a visibly annoyed Elizabeth gets in. Linda, you've always got your hands full, don't you? I let out a wry smile at Susan's words. The upscale restaurant we're headed to is managed by my brother, and today it's reserved just for us. As we enter the spacious hall led by the staff, my nephew Jason and his parents spot me and come over. Aunt Linda, long time no see. Jason looks thinner than the last time I saw him, maybe because he's been studying hard, but he looks happy. Congrats on getting into college. It's going to be tough, but keep at it. I narrow my eyes at Jason, who cheerfully replies. Images of Elizabeth and her early years of marriage cross my mind. She used to have such a cute face, too. Ah, uh, you must be the famed junior I've heard about. I'm Elizabeth, a practicing doctor. Nice to meet you. Elizabeth, who had been busy with her phone, pushes past me and interrupts my conversation with Jason. Christopher and Susan steady me as I stumble. Charles, keep an eye on Elizabeth so she doesn't go off the rails. Christopher advises. Oh, sorry. Thank you both. Charles, you're here to have fun too, so lighten up. Let's all enjoy the food together. My words relax Charles. Soon the food arrives and we all relish our time together as a family. Wow, your hard work really paid off, huh? Congratulations, keep it up. Amidst the chit-chat, another relative congratulates Jason. Thank you, I owe it all to my parents for letting me try multiple times. I'll do my best to make them proud. Reacting to Jason's comment, Elizabeth, who had been gulping down wine, approaches him. So you tried multiple times? I got into a prestigious medical school on my first try. And even now, people see me as excellent. Elizabeth's face is beet red. She's clearly drunk. Charles in the background is trying to pull her arm and stop her, but it's futile. At the celebratory event... An unexpected comment freezes the expressions of my nephew and the relatives nearby. Elizabeth continues cheerfully. Well, passing after multiple tries is still passing, right? Just do your best. You don't look too gifted and you probably can't keep up with your studies. I can't stand it anymore. I rush up to her and scold. Elizabeth, enough is enough. That's way too far, even if you're tipsy. Apologize. Elizabeth seems to finally notice the stares from everyone around her. 
Instead of showing any remorse, she snaps back at me. What? You, Linda, who's only capable of caregiving, are telling me a doctor to apologize? It's not about being a caregiver or a doctor. Why do you have to put others down? Why can't you understand that's a horrible thing to say someone who's worked hard? My words are nods of agreement from my younger son's family and other relatives. Thanks to the alcohol, Elizabeth's already red face, now combined with her angry expression, resembles a tomato. Quick as a flash, she grabs a nearby glass and attempts to splash its contents on me. I catch sight of a horrified Susan rushing towards me and I instinctively shut my eyes. Stop it! A man grabs Elizabeth's hand, stopping her. The crowd murmurs at the entrance of a gentleman around my age. Recognizing him, I exclaim, James! Sorry I'm late, Linda. Susan sighs in relief, and I can see she's concerned for me. Still trembling with a furious expression, Elizabeth shouts, You're also a relative? Stop meddling! James tries to seize Elizabeth's hand. He looks at her with pity and says, It's surprising someone like you is a doctor. What you should be doing is encouraging and supporting him in the struggles to come. Could you please refrain from such distasteful behavior? For the sake of other doctors as well? My nephew awkwardly shrugs his shoulders. The surrounding family and Christopher are encouraging him, saying, Don't worry about it. Elizabeth, this is James, who is going to remarry Mom. Remarry? Shocked by Christopher's words, Charles explains, Remember that dinner you suddenly decided not to attend? That's when we introduced him to the family. He's practically family now, so he was invited today. Elizabeth yells, I wasn't told about this. To which my older son replies, We did tell you, and shrugs his shoulders. Eventually, Elizabeth snorts. Seriously, you're getting remarried at your age? Isn't that embarrassing? I bet your partner is just like Linda, living off a pension. Why don't you give Linda's house to Charles? That house is too good for her anyway. Broke pensioners like you should just leave and live in a cheap apartment with your new spouse. For the first time in my long life, I was rendered speechless by anger. My fists shook. I can tolerate her mocking me, but insulting James, who agreed to spend the rest of his life with me, is unacceptable. Don't you know, Elizabeth? James is the brother of the hospital director where you work. Susan, who had been pale since Elizabeth's ramp began, revealed James's identity. Wait, what? My director's brother? A dumbfounded Elizabeth receives a wry smile from James. I'm just a humble town doctor. I don't have the high-ranking position my brother has. I've heard from Linda and my brother that you're quite the problem child. Despite your skills, you're disrespectful to patients, and complaints about you are numerous. Elizabeth's face turned pale, as if her buzz had instantly worn off. James had humbly understated his own accomplishments. He was a respected doctor who had branched off from a big hospital to lead his own private practice. Many of my relatives are his patients, and he's well regarded. A murmur of agreement ripples through the crowd, even some laughs tinged with scorn. What is this? I didn't hear about any of this. Elizabeth, visibly disturbed, drops her phone. As a senior physician and a medical professional, she probably thought she would be praised by everyone. Picking up the phone, Charles's expression darkens instantly. For once, Charles, who usually remains still or shows only fear, clearly displays his anger. Peering into the phone screen, Christopher, Jason, and the rest of the relatives also look disconcerted. Hey, give it back! Elizabeth lunges clumsily at Charles but trips, falling flat on the ground. Charles looks down on her coldly. We're getting a divorce. Charles hands me the phone with a curt remark. 
Both James and I look at the screen, our eyes widening. Messages between her and a man appear. Family gatherings are so boring. If I'm going to a fancy restaurant, I'd rather go with you. And... I shouldn't have come. Should have just gone on a date like usual. Cheer me up after this, okay? Let's get all lovey-dovey. Elizabeth's messages, coupled with replies, reveal an unmistakable romantic relationship. Cheating? No wonder she's always on her phone. I glance at Elizabeth, her face drained of all color, completely pale. From red to blue, and finally white. Rare to see someone's face change color so drastically in such a short amount of time. Wait, hold on. Talking about divorce isn't something we should do here, is it? Elizabeth's voice quivers. Charles retorts, Says the person who made inappropriate comments and disrupted everyone. I can't help but agree. I've asked Charles before, Have you ever thought about divorce? No matter how coldly or harshly he was treated, he never mentioned divorce. From an outsider's perspective, the reason must have been love, and nothing else. The moment he saw Elizabeth's phone, whatever love remained must have vanished. Finally breaking down, Elizabeth bursts into tears. I'm so sorry. I apologize for everything. The affair is all of it. Please forgive me. Her pathetic cry echoes through the air. Then, unsolicited, Elizabeth starts spilling the beans through her tears. How she got carried away thinking she was special because she's a doctor. How she met someone better than her husband Charles and got carried away. And how she wanted to push all the housework and troubles onto Charles and me so she could have fun with her lover. All excuses, I think, a dry smile crossing my lips. Charles thought her behavior changed due to a job shift, but that wasn't it. The timing of his job change probably coincided with when she started cheating. I grab Elizabeth's arm and make her stand. Elizabeth, if you're going to apologize, show it in your actions. We'll talk later. Don't make everyone else uncomfortable any longer. Upon hearing my words, Elizabeth apologizes deeply on the spot, tears streaming down her face. After the dinner party wrapped up, Charles and I immediately went to apologize to Jason and his family. My second son and his wife, along with James, followed us. Jason's dad, who was also my younger brother, was furious, but Jason was smiling. Today taught me that arrogance leads to ruin. When I become a doctor, I'll make sure not to make the same mistakes as Elizabeth. Jason's parents said they were mad at Elizabeth, but grateful to us for trying to stop her. They forgave us. Also, congratulations on your remarriage. Aunt Linda, you've always been dedicated to caregiving, and you're an incredible person to your family and others. My parents and I know that. So, I wish you all the happiness. At Jason's words, everyone else remembered and James and I were showered with blessings from relatives. Elizabeth was sulking in the background, glaring in our direction. A divorce discussion with Charles is looming for her. Elizabeth's divorce seems inevitable. Months later, as my eldest son divorced, I remarried James and we lived together. Turns out, Elizabeth's affair was with a married man. The damages claimed from Charles and the lover's wife will likely be substantial. Additionally, Elizabeth lost her medical license due to her existing bad reputation and her affair with a married man. I imagine she'll have to make a living in some jobs she once looked down upon. As for me, I continue my work as a caregiver in my husband's private hospital. I just love this job. My home after remarriage, and now houses Christopher and his spouse. Charles, who was supposed to inherit the property, declined. He handed me some money afterward, saying it was a matter of settling things. I couldn't refuse. Charles apologized again, pledging to change his weaker self, 
and now lives alone in an apartment. Just the other day, I got word that Susan is pregnant. I can't wait for the arrival of my grandchild.